this is about handrail because we we always we always have the same issue that pops up every time. Usually, the specifications don't really cover in the glazing area the issue of handrail and how how are we supposed to uh, allow it to deflect? What are what are the deflection limits associated with it? And so, you know, I kind of looked around on the internet and somebody else, another engineer, had the same issue in, in documenting what are the limitations for deflection of handrails that are out there. And so in this chart down at the bottom, they kind of list the sources of deflection criteria. And I thought that that was kind of a neat little chart to, you know, to, as a go-by for us. Um, ICC Evaluation Service, they give a little bit of a different deflection limit, H over 12. ASTM E985 is for metal rails. We do have a copy of that that's up on the shared area. That gives H over 12. 1914 Universal Safety Standards, they give H over 56. And then the I, IBC table, uh, 1604.3, that's just a real general vague uh, deflection limit, uh, mostly for anything that's going to uh, have captured glass in it. And so it's L over 60, but then they have a criteria that's right below that, that if you have a cantilever, then it's going to be 2L over 60. So. But this guy just uses it as H over 60. I've seen specifications where it does spell out the deflection criteria for uh, glass railing. And a lot of times it'll be H over 50, just the height of the rail over 50 uh, for a limitation. <coughs> My question to you is, for wind loads, what is the deflection limit? of a handrail that's outside. <coughs> what should it be? I think there's there's a few things to consider. You, you brought up something uh, that I used to explain our client, which is I insulated glass units have components inside of the glass. But if you're over deflecting them, you can start breaking them, and the, the IG unit itself could become Break. Yeah, but and also you need to know if it becomes a serviceability issue. If you're going to have people leaning on it and f feeling as if they're going to fall, mm -hmm. or if this is just a windscreen with no access to the public, you know. So yeah, th th I guess those factors are uh, determine how much. Yeah. So ins or not. insulated glass, the, the the glass section of the IBC, it does have a a limit that they specify, L over 175, for something that is supported stiffly on all sides. That's that's the criteria, L over 175. The reason for that, that they, that they put that in there, is that insulated glass units have got to be supported stiffly on all sides by a member. Otherwise, the ASTM you know, E1300 charts don't work because that's the assumption that it's supported stiffly on all of, the, all of the sides for those charts to work. So that's why they throw in the L over 175 as a criteria. For laminated glass, just standing out there serving as a cantilever, that doesn't apply. So in whenever we're doing calculations for handrail, we've got certain criteria for loads that's supposed to be on the handrail for the guard. What, what, are, what are those loads that we need to design a guard for. 50 PLF linear, yeah, 200 pound point. Mm -hmm. 50 pounds per lineal foot or the 200 pound point load. The criteria that is mentioned here for deflection applies to those loads. What about wind? See, I think wind, I usually haven't had that issue because I do have the 200 pound that kind of controls. Mm -hmm. And so it drives down the deflection for yeah. wind. But uh, I mean, typically no one's going to be standing near that handrail during our high wind events. Yeah. So I don't think the deflection is that big of a deal for a handrail under wind. Yeah. So 
ultimately the issue is we don't have the same criteria for when for limiting the deflection and staying within that that criteria for a handrail or a guard. Um, it, ultimately, it's stress that covers for wind. So if you have a very high wind pressure that is, you know, it's acting like a parapet, and you get it extreme and it controls over the 200 pound point load, you know, you can allow that to be governed by stress. It can deflect, you know, three inches. It doesn't matter because nobody's out observing the deflection of that of that piece. As long as it's in its elastic range and it can come back, nobody nobody really cares. What about let's say you know how we do on um, on those automatic sliders? Yeah. We've considered a reduced pressure with with a separate limit. When people are out they will see, to some extent, movement of this under a lower pressure. Is that something that we should consider, set a limit for, for a lower pressure? Because otherwise, I mean, if this thing's deflecting three inches or so, if the pressure's lower, is two inches okay with people out there? Yeah, you know, I would really think that that would be a, a problem with the stiffness. I, w I would doubt that it would hold up to the 200 pound point load. Mm -hmm. I think that it would still be deflecting two inches and that would be the, you know, it would be over the limits for that 200 pound. So I, I think that, that that issue probably just falls away, but you know, that, that might be a good point, you know, to kind of look at something like that. I don't know what that would be. <laughs> that I think that would be more of a judgment. Yeah, I think the it's like Matt call. said, you know, most of the time, whenever we get into just the pure glass, it's the 200 pound point load that, that really governs. And the, uh, if you get into a really high pressure, if you're close to the, uh, the coastal region, or if it's a parapet, you know, type of an application, then it's taking load on both faces. You know, it may, it may throw it over, it may govern, you know, for uh, stress. I did have one that, one situation that, uh, the wind controlled and it was like what you're talking about. It was a parapet condition mm -hmm. and it had a rail cap. So the 200 pound point load could always be spread 45, yeah. even if it's at a corner. Um, so the, the parapet load controlled, but what we did was, what you're saying is I basically told the client, hey, you know, during a high wind event, this could deflect two inches, but really you'd be more worried about someone flying over the edge of the railing than, you know, whether it's looking like it's deflecting too much, it's not over stress. Are these deflections, um, so these are along the edge of the glass or at the center of the glass, right? But they're in plain deflection. Uh, it would be at the top of the, uh, top, of the top of the glass. How about the posts themselves? Do we have any limitation for, for the posts that are holding the glass? Are, are there any uh, limits for that? I would come back to some of these metal rail, you know, limits for the, it, it's, it's what they call the, uh, Look at uh, 2B in the almost the center of the page. The newel post height divided by 12. So if we've got a post, it may fall back under that criteria. I mean, that's a lot. You know, it's a uh, H over H over 12. That's a. That's what I was kind of getting at with the. That would be too. I think that that would be too uh, too much. At the, at, you know, for right. almost. So I would rather you're not putting the glass in. If, if all the posts are deflecting about the same, you know, the glass is basically flat, you know. And then you have some additional deflection on the handrail if, if, if the posts are deflecting outward or inward. Uh, so that, I think that is mostly a serviceability issue of people not feeling like they're, feeling like they're, they're going to fall down. Yeah. I don't think it's more, it's a stress issue at that point of the glass itself. Now, if you have a windscreen that, that like we had in Top Goal, that it's like five feet of, above a ledger thing or like a parapet, I mean, people can touch it, but nobody's going to be leaning against it because yeah. it's on top of the parapet. And so in that case, you know, nobody's going to be measuring. Oh, it's five eighths. Yeah. <laughs> the flag, the post is deflecting about five eighths. So. And that I think that is more of a judgment call by whoever sealing it. Take a look at the second. Uh, handout. Uh, 
another key issue that we've got to watch for whenever we're assessing, you know, deflection limits for a, a handrail or a windscreen is are the specs. You know, usually it's not mentioned in the specs. There's not a, a individual spec section. But in this case, this is uh, this is an actual spec from a windscreen project where we have a windscreen that's at the top part of a building, doesn't serve as handrail or guard, it's just windscreen that's sitting up there to beautify a building. And so in this, they actually identify in the page before all of the different things that are in the scope and one of those items is decorative glass and it says windscreen at the top of the building. And so it does identify that this spec would control for the deflection. So whenever you look down under the performance requirements, it kind of gives you the design wind pressures, the same, you know, ASTM, you know, E1300 criteria, and then over on the next page gives a little bit more in the, uh, the, the uh, performance criteria. Eight likes per 1,000, that's the typical, you know, stuff that we deal with. Look under item D, maximum lateral deflection. So this is supposed to be for glass that's supported on all four edges to limit the deflection at the, at the, uh, at the design wind to L over 50 times the short side. This is actually something that I've seen thrown back for criteria on a cantilever, uh, H over 50 criteria out of the glass spec. So, I just wanted you to be aware of that because there's been a couple times in the past where we've asked questions about, you know, well, what is our, you know, criteria for, you know, allowing deflection and architects have come back and said, use H over 50, you know. And in other cases, I've seen actual specifications. I couldn't go back and find those specifications, but sometimes it is mentioned specifically for handrail that it's glass rail, that it's H over 50. So I would recommend kind of using somewhere in the bottom part of that first chart, H over 56 or H over 60, or even H over 50 is our, is our overall limit for deflection of glass rail under specific loads of, of the, uh, the guard type loads, if, if that's required. But for wind, you really got to check it out. And you got to be careful if it's a listed product and they, and they say this in the glass specs, you might have an architect that points back to this area. And he might require, you know, that for the wind. Not all the time, but I'm just letting you know that that may be a sticking point that they may come back and they say, you know, no, you know, you've got you've to limit that to H over or L over 50. So that's my experience kind of with the, with the deflection criteria of, of wind screens. Say, say you have a glass decorative wall and it's sitting out in the garden somewhere and it's just sit, sitting there for decoration. What, what are the limitations for deflection that you want to design for that? Again, for, for something that just sits out in a garden and it's a decorative, you know, wall or something like that, that architects are using glass in a lot of strange ways. The, the limit for wind is really nothing unless it's specified, unless they've got something specific, it's really nothing for wind. It's going to be the stress that limits it for wind. So these are mostly just for the 15 to 200? Yeah, for the, for the real loads of 50 pounds per linear foot and a 200 pound, unless it's very specific in the specs. Yeah. And I, I recommend that you always check the 8800 spec because it might, 
you know, they might have some section in there that covers, you know, handrail. One area where it really gets hairy and uh, it's kind of like grayer is when you say that they extend the curtain wall on top of the roof. Yeah. And they uh, use that curtain wall as a as a handrail at that point. So yeah. You have to meet the deflection criteria of the cantilever end of the curtain wall plus any of the you know, 50 or 200 limitations. If that's the case, if they're extending curtain wall up, then I would definitely go with the 2L over 175 as, as a limit for the cantilever. I always just stick to the L over 50 or one inch. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Just as an FYI, that's what's in our instructor right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very good. I think if we stay within that, then we should be safe for those loads, not for wind. For wind, if you have you know something that, that is a windscreen, I don't think you have to live with a deflection criteria. Um, when if you do have a hand, the same the thickness of the glass thing. If you do have a handrail without a rail cap and no ceiling in between, um, we should watch out for that as well, right? So the 50 pounds per foot load, you can still have that finger touching. Yeah. Any questions or thoughts about that?